here we are. And we want to present with you uh, and, and together with Chris a little bit uh, on where we are with the CJR initiative on agroecology that is uh, has been kind of, of created in the context of the TPP as well, and now being also implemented uh, as part of the TPP. So uh, next one. So uh, this is just a reminder of what this initiative is, uh, is about. So this initiative is uh, working in seven countries. And in these seven countries, we are working on living landscapes. And these living landscapes are really uh, sort of innovations hubs where we want to uh, uh, facilitate the co-creation of innovations, not only uh, farming practices, not related only with that, but also institutional innovations that can help to support a uh, different type of agroecological transitions. So for that, uh, we, we established this living landscapes in these seven countries, and then we deploy uh, different work packages with our uh, partners. Two of the work packages are the ones on the top are devoted to work on those institutional innovations. Mainly in this phase of the initiative, we are looking at business models and how the business models can incorporate agroecological principles and at the same time support agroecological transitions. And the other one is about the policy and institutional arrangement that are conducive to agroecological transition. So we are working there with a different type of food system actors to see how we can align better current policies or also can uh, improve current institutional arrangements that can support agroecological transitions. In the bottom part, you have other two work packages that are more regard, uh, related to uh, the provision of science, uh, scientific evidence on what works and what doesn't work uh, uh, in agroecology, basically in relation to the innovations that are going to be co-created in the living landscapes. But also, since we are working, and as you will see later, in setups where that transition has already started, that work package is, is going also to, to kind of learn of, uh, from what is happening and, and see and build evidence on what is working, what is not working from different perspectives and in relation to different agroecological principles. And then we have another work package that is the, the one in the very uh, bottom part that is uh, understanding what triggers and what drive behavior change in those living landscapes and, uh, and per type of uh, food system actors. And then with these to try to set up uh, strategies that can be more effective when supporting agroecological transitions in these areas. So, and here, uh, this, is, this is just uh, some, some adjustment to this uh, approach of Gleesman around the agroecological transformation. And basically, uh, here we want to kind of note that when we have arrived to these different settings, we have a kind of a knowledge that in many cases we are starting from a level zero. I mean, this level zero means areas where there is not even any use of inputs. So it's not about changing the inputs we use in, the, in farming or uh, transforming the farming, but it's actually how we can improve productivity there, but with uh, in a sustainable way. So this, uh, that's why we have made, made this adjustment to this uh, the initial, uh, the proposal of Klisman to recognize that it's level zero. And then uh, as, you, as you have noted before, we are working beyond the farm level. So we are talking about policy change. We are talking about business models. So we really want to go beyond only the redesign or the adjustment of how food is produced, but also how farmers are connected to markets and are connected to the, uh, to the, to the policy framework in the countries where we work. So kind of going beyond uh, level two in, in practical terms. Next one. So, so on this one, then you can see uh, these differences. So, so here uh, we just want to show, uh, I mean, how different are the different settings where we are working across these seven countries that also kind of show uh, the different agroecological transitions we're talking about. 
So for example, in Burkina Faso, it's about optimizing the interaction between livestock and agriculture, introducing legumes. In India, in Andhra Pradesh, it's, it's about uh, reducing the reliance on external inputs and improving water and soil management. And in Kenya, it's about uh, kind of improving pest management, soil and water management through better uh, through co innovations and also kind of uh, interacting better with policies that can support that. And in Laos, Peru, and Tunisia, and Zimbabwe, also the, the the conditions are pretty different among them. So in Laos, it is about uh, improving water and land management through integrated uh, low input agriculture and aquatic food production. Uh, in Peru, it's about improving our organic cocoa systems that are already happening there, but there is still some gill gaps there, and also there are some opportunities to improve the environmental sustainability of those systems and also the, the socioeconomic dimensions. In Tunisia, it's about boost, boosting the resilience of crop livestock, livestock systems and also kind of mixing these with other sources of livelihoods. And in Zimbabwe, we are also co-developing these innovations also with a focus on cereals, leg legumes, livestock and vegetables. So here, what I wanted to highlight is that the starting point in each of those living landscapes is very different. Also, we have been engaging with the, with, the, with the actors to define, okay, what is the type of agroecological transitions that you want to pursue, you are interested in pursuing. And then based on that understanding, then we are also bringing very different type of partners into that uh, co-creation process in each of the countries. Next one. So uh, in a nutshell, this is where we are after uh, almost a year of having started this uh, initiative. So basically, as I said, in each of the country, we are engaging with different type of actors to understand what is the, the vision, the common vision regarding the, the desired agroecological transitions. We want to understand where we can improve things in their farms, but also in relation to their business models with others and also to the policy environment. So here are the numbers when you, when you see their people engage or food system actors engage are those that have been effectively participating in that process of, of defining those transitions. And then uh, we have now created this uh, or established these living landscapes in the seven countries. And as I noted already, that reflect a variety of contexts with different type of uh, partners. Also, uh, all the living landscapes already have a context assessment where we have kind of noted, okay, where we are in terms of their ecological principles and where, and that's kind of our starting point. Then we have also developed a new assessment framework that we want to apply in these settings to understand what works and what doesn't work. And what is very key on this one is that we are uh, proposing to use indicators that are uh, sensitive and context relevant for the food system actors in each of these landscapes. Also, we have already identified the value chains where we see opportunities to incorporate our ecological principles and we started already in Peru kind of nailing that down to specific business models and see in, in collaboration with the business partners, I mean, the farmers, for example, and the buyer of the product, how they can incorporate agroecological principles in their business models. And here I'm talking about, for example, inclusion, I'm talking about fairness and, uh, and environmental stewardship. Also, we have advanced already with a policy tracking tool that is going to help us to see, okay, where are those policies that can be influential in an agroecological transitions and how we can track it systematically across the landscapes. And also we have analyzed already some previous experiences in the landscapes from the behavior change perspective to understand what really triggers uh, different type of behaviors and decision in these living, living landscapes and from there, learn and see how we can strategize better in our landscapes to trigger the desired behavior change. And, and just before I pass the floor to Chris, uh, we are already also engaged in some uh, specific opportunities that we have identified in these living landscapes to kind of uh, trigger some uh, impact outcomes. I mean, changes in behavior, changes in investments uh, towards these agroecological transitions. So for example, we are now linked uh, to uh, the process for developing the national agroecology strategy in Kenya. 
we are also now linked to the process in the region in Peru where, where we are working at that wants to establish an agroecological corridor of, of, of 100,000 hectares. Uh, we are also working and linked to a process in Peru for the promotion of biotrade, and the government is very interested to put a focus on agroecology in this uh, strategic plan for biotrade. And also with a, a private sector in Peru, we have agreed on exploring how uh, carbon markets can be an alternative or a supplementary financial mechanism to support agroecological transitions in cocoa farmers uh, that are producing organic cocoa already. So with this, I want to pass the floor to Chris to listen a little bit of what is coming next in this year and, uh, and what will be our priorities. Over to Chris. Thanks, Marcela, and greetings, everyone. So but, you know, we progress has been good this last year and and looking forward uh, to 2023 just to give you a few extra insights into what we're planning so there have been a flood of reports that have come out already so from work package one you know um the 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 uh, essence of the engagement with the uh, uh stakeholders in the seven different living landscapes and then developing a stakeholder mapping plan and how to work with stakeholders, but basically on the ground, working with stakeholders to co-create uh, possible innovations for agroecology, which will probably be built on top of a visioning exercise where, again, working with stakeholders to come up with a vision for agriculture in, in the region, bearing in mind that we're talking about holistic agriculture, the whole food system. So it's not just the, the land practices, but also the food, the whole food chain policy, etc. So that work is, is starting at pace and there's a great deal that will have to be done this year. In support of that, the second work package is developing a, a new assessment tool. And um, some people might roll their eyes at this, but you know, there are many assessment tools on the shelf already. And the emphasis of this one is really, we, we've, we've given it the acronym of HOLPA with the emphasis being on whole, that, that it's a holistic performance assessment tool, that the, the tool encompasses all of the environmental, the social, economic, and agricultural factors, all of them together. and. The, the idea is that we will synchronize with the visioning practice, which is taking place in the living landscapes. And based on the visioning, we will introduce specific local indicators, which will be matched against general indicators that will be applied in every living landscape. So the, the tool will be a mixture of both general indicators as well as uh, context-specific indicators. And that, that tool is in the process of finalization and then will be piloted and then rolled out later in this year. So Marcel has already mentioned the, the progress that's been made in Peru and Kenya. And th these are two reports that have been produced. And really this is looking at business models and how business models can actually affect the way that agroecology can develop in a living landscape. And going forwards, the, um, the, the, there's also a keen eye on the policies and how policies can be changed and adapted to encourage investment and, and development of agroecology in, in each living land, landscape. And then the final thing is, and this report alludes to it as well, is identifying the drivers of behavior, behavior change per type of actor and seeing what can be done to, to, to work with behavior issues around the innovation towards ag agroecology. So there's, there's a lot of information, there are a lot of reports which have already been produced you probably can't click on your link right there, but um, 
you can go onto the website and there's a lot to be seen. And it's still early days in the project. And this year we have to achieve a great deal, but so far so good. Thank you very much.